Hello and welcome back. We hope that you enjoyed the last weeks. It is time to wrap up this MOOC and summarize what we have discussed. The massive existing building stock and constantly increasing housing demand requires new solutions for the built environment. How can circularity contribute to finding answers? As a reminder, circularity is based on three working principles when looking at the whole life cycle of buildings. Firstly, minimizing resource input, waste emission, water and energy leakage. Secondly, slowing, closing and narrowing energy and material loops. And finally, avoiding disposal and loss of economic and ecological value. The main learning goal of the course is to provide basic terminology so you can engage in the discussion around the circular built environment. We showed you many relevant cases and tried to relate them to the theoretical framework. Remember that we designed the course along different scales. Many aspects need to be considered. We do not create new solutions by just looking at technology, stakeholders or management concepts alone. Addressing these aspects from different perspectives is the thread that connects the different course modules. I also want to recall the theoretical framework we developed in week one. We can divide three strategic approaches that relate to the life cycle scheme. Smarter use and manufacture, extended lifespan and end of life application. Around those, we have allocated the R framework. It is a hierarchy of measures which starts with refusing and thus avoiding building in first place and ends with the energetic recovery by incinerating waste. In fact, this is not considered a real circular strategy and is therefore the lowest measure in the hierarchy. The function of the R framework is to translate the basic strategic approaches into action models. We will come back to this later. We started looking at products and materials, the base ingredient of buildings. To understand the environmental impact, we analyzed the life cycle of bricks. How is the base material sourced? How is a brick produced and what happens during the use and end of life phases? We identify key aspects of the circular process for products. Who are the stakeholders and what are the incentives? In more detail, we have discussed the role of design for disassembly. The ability to cleanly separate components can extend the useful life of products with circular measures, such as reuse and remanufacture. Hereby, it is important what type of modular jointing strategy is chosen in order to create robust and flexible buildings. We showed you an example for aluminum recycling in the facade industry which demonstrates how difficult it is to achieve high-quality recycling in the existing linear economy. Week 3 focused on the building level. Besides being an arrangement of comfortable spaces, a building is also a collection of materials and assembled components. It includes services and networks to provide resources such as energy, water and fresh air. A building can be seen as a composition of layers, as every layer has different lifespan durations. Skin, structure, services, space plan and stuff. Understanding these different layers allows for making more sustainable decisions. The materials and the assembly techniques must be chosen in compliance with the circular design principles at the very beginning of the process. The example of the circular pavilion in Amsterdam shows the attempt to realize a fully circular building, meaning that mostly reused or renewable materials are applied and that the building is designed for disassembly. Finally, the central role of business models and stakeholders has been discussed using the case of the temporary courthouse in Amsterdam. This results in the concept for the entire building being one circular product. It is temporary and will move to different locations with different functions in the future. 
During week four, we discussed circularity at the scale of the city. We looked at the three most important flows that enter, circulate and leave the urban environment every day. Water, energy and waste. We acknowledged the impact of potential circular solution on this scale. And the various ways solutions can be organized, individually, collectively or centrally. Closing the life cycle is not apparent for the flows at the urban scale. Water is circular. It enters the circle through rain or fresh water provisions and can be reused after purification. Energy can never be circular because energy is converted from its source into heat and CO2. However, energy can come from sustainable sources, for example sun, wind or geothermal heat. Waste or household products can be treated accordingly to the circular principles and all R's are applicable. This means that user involvement and awareness are of great importance in the transition towards a circular city. The week on regions centered around one comprehensive exercise, integrating concepts and elements from the previous weeks by thinking through all scales. We call that urban metabolism or network approach. The exercise aims to understand the different impacts of thinking through scales and wants to show how material flows have an environmental and spatial impact on building, city or regional level. The circular metabolism of a region aims at understanding geographical value chains of building products, from extraction to building site to material treatment facility. It explores which activities are connected to each other and how they are connected, and helps us to understand in which way circular strategies can be applied. We are really at the beginning of the transition phase towards a circular built environment. Many problems still need to be solved. This MOOC is a first introduction and you can find more online learning material on edX. But there is more to come. New courses will be available soon. Look out for our professional education package on circular building products. Finally, if there is one thing that we would like to have achieved it is that this course was inspiring and provided you with the fundamental knowledge to engage in creating a more sustainable circular future for everyone, everywhere. Thank you.